Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm gonna show you how I put together this little orchid setup over here with the glass bowl. This is one of my recent acquisitions. It is a Lepanthus orchid, which is a really, really cute miniature grown mainly for its foliage, but the fact that it's so tiny gives it a lot of versatility. And many people grow it in many different ways. So I decided to try one of the ways that I feel is most decorative. So don't forget to give this video a like if you do end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post three times a week. Now it's time to move Maya from there because she will probably end up eating all of my orchids. Thank you for the cameo, dear. The Lepanthus is a miniature plant, a miniature orchid, and the Caladictian in particular is really suited for home conditions. It doesn't really fuss much about anything other than humidity, or so the articles say. And really it makes sense. Can you see how delicate this little plant is? First of all, it is a very, very tiny plant. Then can we see that there are no pseudobulbs or storage devices of any sorts? These leaves are very tender, very fine, and just look how tiny the new stems are. It is a very, very delicate plant, so it does enjoy high moisture, and I am sure that if the air is very, very dry, it will suffer and it will get dehydrated pretty fast. For this reason, if you search this orchid on the internet, you will see people using all sorts of terrarium-like containers, from jars to quite elaborate vivariums or terrariums. It is a plant super suited for that, but it doesn't mean that we have to build an entire vivarium around it if we don't have the means. So one of the setups that I found very decorative was the glass globe, and I thought it would be a great project to try out myself, and that's what we shall do today. So first and foremost, we need to unmount this orchid. We can see that it's already mounted on this ceramic piece, which tries to imitate a branch or a log. This is an epiphytic orchid. It doesn't grow in soils, and I think it's just easier in the trade to mount it, but it doesn't mean you have to grow it mounted. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep this lab, we're gonna see as I go, but first and foremost, I need to remove it from this mount. Most mounted orchids are stabilized on the mount by a piece of wire, and in this case, it's very, very visible. So I'll just cut it all together. I don't intend to reuse it. And here we go. The orchid wasn't actually attached to the mount, but the reason I'm doing this is because I want to offer fresh new sphagnum moss and fresh medium generally. I don't know how long this orchid has been in this sphagnum moss, I don't know the quality of it, and also I can see a bit of algae, which I don't want to have in my mini terrarium. So I prefer to work with my supplies, which I know are good and fresh. And oh boy, this orchid is so delicate, I am slightly scared to work with it. A little tip, if ever you find an orchid or a plant to be very, very tiny, you can absolutely use long nose tweezers and it will help you remove all the pieces of medium, which you would otherwise struggle with. And there we have it, I removed most of the sphagnum moss. This is as much as I'm comfortable with working. There are very, very tiny pieces of moss, which I will not go into because I don't want to damage this little plant. I also noticed that this leaf has a flower spike and it's just so tiny. I'm not even sure if my camera can focus, maybe it can. Do you see that little stem right in the middle of the leaf? That is a flower spike. And this orchid is a sequential bloomer, meaning this little stem can produce multiple flowers one after the other. And the flowers are supposed to be super, super tiny, but awfully cute and red in color. So I'll be sure to make an update when that flower will open. So I'm gonna clean my little table and come back with the globe. After thinking a little bit about what I want to create, I think I will go ahead and use the mount. I just need to remove this hanger. And because this material does not degrade, it is clay, it is absolutely fine if it stays moist all of the time. What I want to do with it is create height. I think that if I manage to cover it in organic material, it will look a lot more natural. And even if a little bit of it peeks out, it doesn't really look all that bad. First of all, I'm gonna rinse it a little bit under the faucet. 
The materials that I'll be using are bark chips and also sphagnum moss. I do list in the description of my videos the brands that I currently use. For this project though, I would definitely go with the compressed version of the Best Grow Sphagnum Moss because this is heat treated and I do see there is a difference in behavior between these two mosses. They're both perfectly fine, but the untreated versions, which are the bigger sized products, they do tend to sprout algae and other things. The compressed version, not so much. And in this setup, I don't want algae. It is a high algae prone setup, so this is why I'm using the compressed version. On the bottom of the globe, I will start with bark chips. Since this globe will be suspended, light will definitely hit the bottom part as well, and algae can form there as well. Bark doesn't promote algae, so it is a great idea to start with this layer. Next, I will add the mount in such a way that it creates a little bit of height. I think I will need to play with it a little bit to find the perfect position. Next up, the layer of sphagnum moss, which will cover the bark and parts, if not completely, the mount. Okay, so I arranged the sphagnum moss in such a way that it kind of completely covers the mount. What I did was wrap it a little bit around the mount and also I made sure that parts of the sphagnum moss are touching the bottom of the globe. And this will help me a lot with watering. You will see in a second what I mean, but now it is time to place the orchid. So because the opening of the globe is so tight and the orchid is so tiny, I will go ahead and use my trusty tweezers, and I will try to arrange the orchid in such a manner that it actually looks good. The roots don't necessarily need to be planted in anything or buried. This is an epiphytic orchid, and they will find their way down the sphagnum moss. But for anchoring purposes, I will try to direct them just a tiny little bit. So I think I'm okay with the position of the orchid. What I wanna do now is cover the sphagnum moss. It would be fantastic if I would have moss, and if you ever want to do this project, I think it will look lovely if you have live moss. In my parts of the world, we don't have live moss anywhere around. Also ordering online takes a lot of time right now. So I'm relying on my own cultures, but for now, I will just cover the sphagnum moss with bark. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if I wouldn't, algae will take over. And if you think algae are green and nice and cuddly, think again. <laughs> They're really not so nice and not so friendly to plants. So I would rather put a layer of bark and deprive whatever algae wants to form from light. And I think we're all done. So time to see how this setup looks like. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's the cutest thing ever. I really, really like it. Now, in the future, if I will ever have a beautiful carpet of moss, I will definitely remove all of that bark and put instead live moss. I absolutely adore moss. It's just very hard to get my hands on it. But if you know me, you know I'm patient and I'm already starting cultures. If I cannot buy moss, might as well try to make it myself. I try to collect the moss that I find on top of newly acquired orchids and cultivate it in separate containers. One more thing that this globe terrarium needs is a little bit of life, except the orchid, so I will add some springtails. These tiny critters are the heart of any terrarium-like enclosure because they are responsible with maintaining the balance. They will feed on molds that might appear due to high humidity and mold spores, even algae to some extent. And what they leave behind, you guessed it, it's fertilizer for plants. This orchid is not a high feeder, so I'm not going to overdo it with fertilizer, but I know the springtails will help a lot in this department. Springtails are another colony that I started from scratch because of where I live, but in other parts of the world, you can actually buy springtail colonies. So first check your pet shops or terrarium stores. If you have such things, you might actually be able to find them for sale there. As for watering, you might've noticed I use this wash bottle, but of course you can be creative with it. 
You can use a spray pump as well, like the one that I use for watering my orchids. The opening of the glass bowl is not so tiny, so I don't think you're gonna have issues. The only thing to be mindful of is to not overdo it. But even if you do, it's really easy to just tilt it and just drain a little bit of the water. You can see that I have quite a little bit of water here. It's okay, it will contribute to the overall humidity and my orchid is still very, very airy. It doesn't actually sit in the water. But you can see that if I want to remove some water, I can do so very easily. Now about that sphagnum moss. I find sphagnum moss to be a unique material which is not only friendly to orchid roots, it has a good pH for them, but it's also watch retentive and very wicking. So that's why I made sure that there are some pieces of moss which touch the very bottom of the globe. This is where the water will pool and whatever moss is present will wick that pool of water and it will distribute it to the entirety of the sphagnum moss mass in the end creating quite the evenly moist environment. This works super great with my other orchids which are potted in normal pots as well and I do believe it will work great in this sort of mini terrarium glass globe, whatever you want to call it. It also has this opening which lets air in but it will also retain a little bit of humidity which this orchid should appreciate. So I think you will do great but of course I will keep you guys up to date. So far so good, I find it really really cute and if this orchid is a fast grower, who knows, maybe I will use it in other bigger projects like terrariums and things of the sorts. But that's another video for the future. Now this orchid is described as a highlight orchid, a worm growing orchid, so I will keep it in this room, not outside, and I will keep it on my southern exposure window so she will receive the best light that I can give it. I will make sure to water it before it actually completely dries out, I want to maintain high humidity, I have my springtails to protect me against molds, so I think I am set. So it's actually been about a week and a half since I filmed that video and here we are today. The orchid is doing really, really great. It doesn't show any signs of dehydration or stress due to humidity, so I do believe the setup is a success. It also looks super, super pretty and the bud that it came with, I think it grew quite a lot but the flower is not completely open yet. So we might see it at the end of the month when I recap all of the blooms in my greenhouse for the month. But until then, I absolutely enjoyed the setup and I absolutely enjoyed the orchid for its foliage. And if you ever see this orchid for sale, I would suggest you buy it. It's really cute. Keep in mind, it is not a rare orchid. It is just slightly unpopular. So I suggest you put it on the wish list, be patient, and also check multiple sources before you purchase it. I just happened to see it for sale for 85 euros under the claim that it was very rare. And I purchased it for 16 and a half euros. So always do research and check multiple prices before purchasing. Generally, we cannot actually have rare orchids in our homes. Rare orchids cost even thousands of euros. So whenever you see people claiming they have rare orchids, most probably they are unpopular. Be careful how much you spend on them. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, it's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time, bye!